Hello and welcome to this very first The Powerful Pregnancy Workout. Um, I'm here with Jana, got that right, and Kirsten. Um, and I feel really short. <laughs> Everyone's really tall, it's really weird. Um, but it's wonderful because both the girls have come to join me today. We will be running classes pretty much every single week and you will see the class grow. Sometimes it'll be smaller, sometimes it'll be larger. Um, but what's really important now is to actually focus on where you are, everybody is in their pregnancy. So, Jana, how many weeks are you at the moment? 16. So, Jana's about 16 and... 15. Okay, fantastic. So we're all going to be at the same-ish stage, somewhere between 12 uh, to 16, 17 weeks within your pregnancy. So we're all kind of within the same month, which is what's so fantastic that everyone's going to grow together, so to speak. So we're going to get going right now, and we're going to start with finding the core. Now, this is going to take us a little bit of time, okay? And the reason for that is that we need to get those core muscles activated first and get them working first. Now, hormones play havoc with our body all the way through the pregnancy and we tend to have surges in hormones and at this stage you think that they're not affecting you or at least the ones that relax the muscles it's a, mus uh, a, a hormone called relaxin um, but also there are other hormones that affect us as well now the one that will be really high at the moment is progesterone Yes, that's the one that makes you feel really nauseous, okay? So progesterone is rising up in your body. And actually, that can make you feel a little bit wobbly as well. So progesterone can have an effect on your muscles, on your ligaments as well. So it's really important that we try to draw in and gather strength because of the hormonal effects on the body. And also, because of the way your body will change throughout your pregnancy, it's really important now to get hold of all those core cool muscles, get them feeling really, really strong so that you can and really feel strong throughout the whole of your pregnancy. Now we think about the core as the pelvic floor and we're going to talk about that first and then we're going to grow out from the core, uh, the, the pelvic core. So the main muscle in the pelvic core is your pelvic floor. Now this muscle runs from your coccyx at the back to your pubic bone at the front and it's like a hammock underneath you and if you were to pull the sides of the hammock out it would be like this diamond shape underneath you so it's pretty much shaped like that but it's not one muscle it's several layers of muscle it's quite a substantial bit of muscle so to connect to it we always think of stopping a wee have you been told that before yep stop a wee to find your pelvic floor don't know if that's how you've been told to find your pelvic floor well it's a lot more than that because it's this big bit of muscle and it goes all the way from your tailbone to your pubic bone and also to the sides of the sit bones so it's like this base to your pelvis so to connect it properly you want to think from the back to the front so we stop a fart from the back it's the best way to describe it so you lift up through the back passage and then you stop away from the front and it's like you're pulling those two feelings together and up inside you. Now, I'll go into a bit more detail about this later, but for now, all I want you to do is stop a fart from the back, stop away from the front and try and pull those two feelings together and up inside you. Can you feel that? And if you put your hands on your abdomen, just do that for me again and just take a breath this time. So inhale, exhale. And then again, stop a fart, stop a wee, pull those two feelings up together and inside you. And do you feel anything else happening? Belly coming in? Yeah. So you feel you should feel your belly coming in. So try it again. So take a breath. Inhale. Exhale. Relax. Pull up from the back to the front. Draw those two feelings in together and up inside you. Lift up a little bit higher maybe this time. Pull up and in with your pelvic floor and you should feel your belly coming away. Okay. Now, if you didn't feel that, don't worry about it, because I'm going to go through a lot more detail of the pelvic floor when we're down on the floor. But what I want to do now is get you realizing that it's not just about the pelvic floor. We've already established that the abdominal muscles are engaging a little bit as we pull up through the pelvic floor. So the pelvic floor doesn't work in isolation. It works with the whole of the body. And one of the biggest areas it works with is your diaphragm. So if you think of your pelvic floor here and your diaphragm here, these two are supposed to work together. And if you imagine them on top of each other, when you inhale, the diaphragm expands. So just start breathing for me. So the breathing, the diaphragm comes out. Your lungs expand, your diaphragm comes out. So it extends. And then as you exhale, the rib cage comes in, the diaphragm comes up and in inside you. And the pelvic floor should do exactly the same thing. So as you inhale, the diaphragm expands. As you exhale, lift your pelvic floor up. Stop a fart, stop a weed, draw up through your pelvic floor. Now that function should happen naturally. But what happens when you're pregnant, even now, 
you've got this kind of pressure on your pelvic floor. So the pelvis starts to not function properly. And if your diaphragm isn't functioning properly, then the pelvic floor doesn't function properly. So everything starts to go a little bit out of kilter. So you need to focus on breathing because by breathing big all the way through your pregnancy, it's going to help you in so many ways. But for now, all you need to know about is it's going to help you connect your pelvic floor because you guys don't want a pelvic floor that doesn't move. Yep, you want a strong one, but you want one that moves because when you give birth, your pelvic floor has to open, relax, release, extend. Okay, so that's why we need a pelvic floor and a diaphragm that's functioning really well. So we're going to do that a couple more times. Put one hand onto your chest and one hand onto your abdomen. Take another big deep breath for me. Inhale. Exhale. Relax. And then stop a fart, stop a wee, pull up inside you, feel your belly coming in. So as the rib cage comes down, the diaphragm goes up, the pelvic floor comes up. So it's like this kind of thing happening on the outside and this happening on the inside of your body. Yeah, so we'll do that one more time. Take a breath, inhale. Exhale, relax. And then lift up from the back to the front, pull up inside you, lift all the way up inside you and then let it go. Now we can, we've gone from the pelvic floor to the diaphragm and then we're going to go out to the feet and to the head. So the next thing to think about is the position of your head. Now what we tend to do commonly is we stick our chins out quite a lot. And if your boobs are already weighing you down, which they might be, okay, you also tend to kind of drop the shoulders forward because you become conscious of your bigger boobs. Yeah? So we need to bring the shoulders back but we also need to bring the chin in. So if you think of your head like an egg in a spoon, gently rocking, you're just ever so gently bringing your head back and you're not ramming it back to give yourself a double chin, it's just ever so subtly bringing your chin in. And it's a soft feeling and a feeling of extending and lifting your head up from the top. And that's really important because when you bring your head into the right position, it helps the balance of your body. If it's here, it's the heaviest part of your body. So if it's here, it throws your balance out. It's going to throw your core out. And as you go into your pregnancy and get bigger and larger throughout your pregnancy, that is actually really important that that head comes into the right position. So when you bring your head into the right position, these two things, the pelvic floor and the diaphragm, will function better as well. And also the feet, when you bring the feet into the right position, the diaphragm and the pelvic floor function better as well. So I want you to think of three points on the bottom of your feet, one in line with your uh, big toe and the ball of the foot, one in line with your little toe, and then one in line with your heel. Yeah? So it's like a tripod effect. And just for the moment, just rock from your heels into your toes and you're just moving forwards and backwards. Yeah? So you're not taking either off the floor, but you're just feeling your weight change. Now what happens in pregnancy is our weight distribution changes quite considerably. So our center of gravity changes as well. So being very grounded and sure of where your feet are is really important, which is why I always do everything barefoot because you can, you can connect a lot more to the floor and that's really important. So now what I want you to do is settle on a point where you feel all those three points are connected. You're pressing through the inside of the ball of the foot. Now imagine you've got suckers on the bottom of your feet and you're going to draw up through those suckers. So you're pressing through the inside of the ball, pressing through the outside, but more through the inside of the ball of the foot and your heel is connected and it's like you're drawing that in, like you're trying to gather your mat up underneath your feet. Yeah? And that's going to work the core of your foot. Now, here's the magic thing. When you connect your pelvic floor and your foot core together, you feel so much stronger. So just relax and let everything go. Let everything go really floppy for the moment. Yeah, okay. And then take a big breath for me. Inhale. Exhale, relax. Press through the inside of the balls of the feet. Try and gather your feet up. Try and draw those suckers in. Gather the mat up underneath your feet. And then lift up from the back to the front of the pelvic floor. And you should feel a lot stronger and a lot more stable. And this is so important in pregnancy because everything else is doing everything to make you less stable. So you have got to try and work on those core muscles to make you more stable. Okay, so what we're going to do now is move because we've been standing still for far too long. So just take your feet a bit wider and just rock from one foot to the other. And imagine you're holding a baby in your arms. We did this the other day, didn't we? Uh, so you're just rocking a baby in your arms, but you can let your arms go because your baby is inside your tummy. Um, well, it's for today anyway, because you two have still got very much carryable babies, haven't you? So both Jana and, and Kirsten have got little ones who are 
60 months and and 21 months so and this is the thing about exercising in pregnancy you know we have this kind of feeling that we have to take everything really gently you can't take it gently when you've got a toddler running around so you need to be strong so that's why it's really important that we do this and if you're a first time mum okay you want to get yourself as strong as you can so that postnatally you are able to cope with all these stresses that we have to place on our body so this is all really important but for now I just want you to do what I call rocking the baby and just let your body go and just move from side to side now this is actually a movement that you will carry on using all the way through your pregnancy and it's actually a brilliant move to use in labor so you can use it right up to the end and if at any point during the movements we're doing you find anything's getting too much come back to this this is your kind of default move and what it does if you really turn your foot in it helps to release tension through the back of the pelvis yep so it's a really good movement to do what I want you to do now though is just bring your feet in into parallel lines and we're going to peel the right foot off the floor and we're going to do what I call a foot pedal now try to engage the core of your left foot as it's on the floor don't worry if you can't if that's not making sense at the moment do you know what? it doesn't matter as we progress through each class it more and more things will make more and more sense so for now I just want you to do what we call a foot pedal so just switch feet from side to side and it might be good if we have a side view on this so you can just see from the side what we're doing with our feet now think about that posture as you're doing this bring your chin in so you're not ramming the chin back yet you're just subtly bringing your chin in length of the back of the neck and then I want you to put your hands onto your abdomen and I want you to try and pull up through your pelvic floor as you're on the move. Now, this is hard, but it's something I want you to try and do every single day when you're moving around, going for a walk, try and connect your pelvic floor. So as we're doing this, stop a thought, stop a wee, and try and connect. Can you feel it? Can you feel your belly coming in? Can you feel it? Just try to feel that connection to your core as you're doing this. Now, slow the foot pedal down and lift your right foot all the way off the floor. Now, as you do that, engage the core of your left foot and scoop up from the back of your pelvic floor and into the front. Pick your foot up off the floor and just rotate your ankle around. And important to keep your extremities moving, to keep your ankles moving. Yep, so just move that around. Now, put your, keeping your hands under your belly, put your leg back behind you and squeeze into your bottom. You can put your foot on the floor and just drop your right hip forward a little bit and squeeze into your bottom. And try extending the other arm up. So you've got this line of length of pull from your left hand to your right foot. Now draw your shoulder blades back and down and squeeze into your buttocks and just hold that line of length and really reach with the arm and reach with the leg. But very importantly, stop a fart, stop a wee, lift into your belly. Because what you don't want, if we can have another side view, is you don't want, I'm going to do it wrong for the moment, we don't want you really bowing your back. So you're lifting your core in and you're driving your foot into the floor. You're not trying to lift it up towards the ceiling. So you're driving your foot into the floor, which is why it's fine if it's actually touching the floor. And then change sides. So peel your left foot off the floor. So peel it up off the floor. Engage the core of the foot. Scoop up from the back of your pelvic floor and into the front. So stop a fart, stop a wee and rotate your ankle around. How are we doing? You okay? Yeah? And then take the leg back behind you. Squeeze into your buttock. Pull your left hip forward a little bit. Squeeze your bottom. Lift up from your centre. So lift up from the back of the pelvic floor and into your centre. And I'm just going back to check the girls' backs here because that's really important that they're not allowing their backs to arch. And if at home, if you've got a mirror, do use a mirror. Um, or if you can, set a screen of yourself up so that you can watch yourself you know, you could put uh, um, your own, um, uh, put your phone on as an image of you so you can see yourself doing this and just make sure that you're not allowing your back to arch. So just turn side to your mirror or to your phone and just check that you're not overextending your back. So, okay, and then put your foot down. Okay, and then if everybody comes forward on their mats a little bit, so you've got a nice bit of space behind you and we're going to do that again. So you're going to peel your right foot off the floor and just rotate your ankle around and then take your leg back behind you, squeeze into your buttocks. Now what's really common here is we can tend to lean into that supporting side. So just drop your hip forward and down, lift into your center, take the arm up, and really squeeze your right buttock, but keep thinking of your hips being square to the front. So if you think of your hips like headlamps, you don't want them twisting yet, they're shining straight on and forwards. So lift into your center, get that apple under your chin. So imagine you're holding the chin back. So think of that egg and the spoon. Work the shoulders down, lift into your center, breathe. But this time I want you to put your foot down onto the floor. So your foot goes down to the floor, but take your foot a little bit further back. Now can you see what happens to your foot when you take it back? 
it twists, yeah. So Kirsten can see that her heel is turning in. Now, that means that there is some tightness probably going up on in your hips here because the hips are rotating, which is causing that, that twist. Can also be mean there's tightness in your calf as well. So you, if you take your foot back behind you, does anyone feel a tightness in your calf, yeah? So take it back far enough so you feel it stretch, but then we want to really warm it up and move with it. So just move up and down with your right foot. Okay, so can you both try turning your heel out for me? So just turn that, that's it. Does that feel weird? Yeah, yeah so it's a bit strange and it make you want, makes you want to topple over. So here comes the core. So what you're doing is you're relying on other muscles to balance and stabilize you, okay, rather than your core. So when that kind of thing happens, it means there's tightness in muscles because they're trying to keep you upright. And as you go through your pregnancy, if you carry on relying on those muscles, they're going to get even tighter and your core won't get strong. So we need to even ourselves out, get those hips nicely in line. Okay, now, now you've pumped that calf muscle a bit and warmed it up. We're going to hold it down in a stretch, but I want you to engage your core. Make sure your heel isn't turning in. Imagine your feet are fixed in tram lines. Squeeze your right buttock. So just use your buttock. Your glutes are really important. Yeah, I'm going to make you really strong in your buttocks. You'll thank me for it later. Okay, squeeze your right buttock, lift up through your pelvic floor. So stop a fart, stop a wee. And remember that core in your left foot. So press through the inside of the ball of the foot and try and draw up through the inside of the foot if you can. Don't worry if you can't. Now, lift up through your pelvic floor. So we're going to challenge ourselves in this position. Take the arms out in front. This is called a bow and arrow. This is quite a traditional Pilates move. So take a breath for me. Inhale. So use your diaphragm, exhale, lift your pelvic floor up and slide your arm back and look behind you. That's it. And then bring your arm back in. Take another breath and then exhale, slide it back. Lift up through your pelvic floor and into your belly. And then bring it back in. And then slide it back, exhale, lift up through your pelvic floor, stop a foot, stop a wee. And then bring it back in. And then inhale, exhale, slide it back. That's it. And then we're gonna change legs and do that on the other side. So we'll go through our balancing again. So you're going to peel your left off the floor first of all, rotate your ankle around. So we'll start from the very beginning, that's it. And then you're going to take your leg back behind you. And tell me what happens when you put that left foot back. Does it feel tighter? doesn't look... You consciously put it out. Oh, well, well done. Yeah, so it may be that your heel turns and it may be that it feels tighter. It might feel a little bit different because that's the other thing. We tend to not be completely symmetrical. So bring that foot out so that your hips are square to your front. Yeah, and then lift and lower and allow that heel to drop down each time, making sure that you're lengthening through the back of your left calf this time. You're just going to warm it up. So the calf muscles are a muscle that, these are the backs of your legs, yeah, are a muscle that get very tense, yeah, and they uh, are a stress muscle, and we use them all the time. And in pregnancy, because you guys have up to 50% more blood flowing through your body, isn't that amazing? Yeah, so what happens is your extremities, they tend to, the circulation tends to be a little bit poorer, so the ends of your body can get it, that's why we can get problems in our wrists and things like that as well. So it's really important to keep these extremities moving and to keep length in those muscles so that everything can move. So if your calves are feeling really tight, it's really important to try and do stretches on them and get them moving as much as you can. So now hold your heel down, squeeze your left buttock, okay, and then stop a fart, stop a wee, lift up through your belly, and we'll do the same thing again. We're going to go to the left side first, so take a breath, inhale, exhale, draw back. And then bring the arm back in. And then exhale. And then do two more. Inhale. Exhale. And then one more. Inhale. Exhale. Slide the arm back behind you. And then bring it back in. Okay, well done. Now we're going to grab our bands. And you can use a towel or anything you like. Um, and we're going to start to to work with a bit more resistance. Now, bands are brilliant, and I would urge you to get one of these. They're so cheap and easy. And we've got some handle bands as well. Um, you can use anything you like, just a stretchy band. Um, and what, what we want to do is have it quite short, because you want a bit of tension in that band. Now, the reason why bands are so good for us to use in pregnancy is it helps what we call the closing the kinetic chain. It helps and enables us to connect and feel more connected. It's like having your feet grounded to the floor. It's the same principle. It's connecting you. Okay. So the bands are going to help us to think about our upper body strength and core. And you just want a little bit of tension in the band. And then we're going to imagine we're walking a tightrope. 
So put your foot right into the center. I'm going to come forward a little bit actually. Put your foot right into the center and cross your right foot in front of your left. Now, does that make you wobbly? Yeah, so what have we got to use? We've got to use our glutes. So use the strength of your left buttock, squeeze it underneath you, yeah? And then you want to feel your pelvic floor lift. Use the core of the feet as well. Try and draw up through your feet and then lift up through your pelvic floor and into your belly. Yeah, so you should feel stronger. So now we're going to work the diaphragm as well. But what you need to do is really work the shoulder blades down. So imagine there's a little anchor on the bottom of each shoulder blade, drawing it down the back of your rib cage. So take a breath with me. Inhale. Exhale. And as you exhale, squeeze your left buttock. Lift up through your pelvic floor. Feel your belly coming in. Lift your arms up. So let's just go to shoulder height to begin with. And then inhale. Exhale. Bring the arms down. Now, you should be feeling like you're having to really work to balance. Take another breath. Inhale. Exhale. We're going to try and take the arms up higher. Now, you don't have to go up higher, but you can if you like. You, well, you might lose our arms a bit. That doesn't matter. And then inhale. Exhale. Bring it back down. Okay, now we're going to go all the way back behind the neck. So inhale. Exhale. Now, think of your head position as you do this. Keep your chin in. Bring the head back in that spoon. Yeah, think of that egg in the spoon. Okay, and then inhale, hold, and then exhale, lift up through your pelvic floor and into your belly and bring the arms back. Okay, now if that feels too much, you can go one step further back. So I'm just going to go to shoulder height. So inhale, exhale, lift the arms up. You can go all the way back behind your head if you want to. And then inhale, exhale, and take it back. So you go to the level that feels right for you. And then let's do that one more time. Inhale, exhale, pull up through your pelvic floor, lift into your belly. You should feel like you're really working your core. Lift your center, lift your center, lift your center. And then inhale, hold. And then exhale, bring it all the way back. Okay? And then shake your legs out. Yeah? Okay? And then change. You can do the other side. So this time, put your left foot, to think about it then, left foot in front of your right. That's it. Now, you may find it feels different. So tell me, do, do you feel more stable or less stable on that side? Much less. Okay, so that's establishing where we often have one side stronger than the other. Yep, so this is all about trying to even ourselves out as much as we can so that we're balanced. So squeeze your right buttock and lift up through your pelvic floor and into your belly. So take a nice big deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. You can take your arms all the way back if you want to. I'm just going to take mine to shoulder height. Find your center. Work the shoulders down. Inhale. Exhale. Bring the arms down. I might go over my head this time. Inhale. Exhale. You do what you want to do. Pull on the bands a little bit. So, guys, you do what you want to do. Go as far as you want to. And then inhale, exhale. And lift up through your pelvic floor. So when you're moving your arms, you're really trying to lift up through your pelvic floor. So you pause and you take a breath in. And then as you exhale, you move. Squeeze that right buttock. Lift up through your pelvic floor. Feel your belly coming in. Inhale, last one. Exhale. And bring it back. Well done. Okay, so we should have woken up the core muscles a little bit now. We should have warmed the legs up. We've warmed the upper body up so we can do some more resistance work now. So what we've got is we've got some bands behind us and we're going to use them now. So if we can have a side view, please. So we're going to grab a hold of our bands. Now, we've attached these to a bar in the studio. Now, what you can do at home is you can attach them around a... Um, what am I trying to say, around a doorpost um, or anything you like. There are also attachments and you could just go on to Amazon and other wonderful retailers um, and find these door stoppers to actually attach your bands to if you want to do that. So if we can have a, a side view for now. I'm going to come forward a little bit so that, and if um, Jana and Kirsten, you can go back a little bit. So hopefully everyone can see what I'm doing. And then what we're going to do is just work on a lunge position. So lift up nice and tall, engage your core and just step back with your right leg. Exactly the same as if you were doing that calf stretch. But this time you're going to stay on the ball of your right foot. So go back far enough so that you can feel weight coming into the heel of your front foot and that's really important. And then you're going to lift up really tall. Work the shoulders down, bring that apple under your chin, lift into your center. Now we can have a front view because it's quite good to see us from the back as well now. And what you've got to do when you're lunging is really important is that you lower down keeping your back up nice and tall. And actually using the bands helps to stabilize you a little bit as you're doing this. And then you're going to lift back up and squeeze into your buttocks. And make sure that as you lower down, you keep your body vertical. So you vertically drop down to the floor and then you lift back up and you squeeze into your buttocks. Now we've got to connect to the pelvic floor. So take a big breath for me. Inhale. 
Exhale, lift up through your pelvic floor and into your belly and lower down. And then lift back up. So you should be able to do that in one breath, but I'm going to go behind you guys now and just watch you. So can you bo both put both bands into your right hand? Set. And that will make you have to think about your core a little bit more because the band is just in one hand. So come up nice and tall for me, really squeeze into your buttocks. Squeeze your right buttock for me, lift up through your pelvic floor and just lower down, sliding your back down the wall. Your weight should be into the heel of your front leg. And then you push through the front heel, but you squeeze back up into your buttocks at the top. Perfect. Okay. And then do that for me one more time. Take a breath. Inhale, exhale. Squeeze your buttocks, lift up through your pelvic floor, lower down. And then inhale, exhale, and lift back up. Or you do that in one breath. We're going to change sides now. So if you just move your bands over to your left a little bit, um, we're going to do it on the other side. So guys at home, just make sure you're switching to your different band. You know, I might be in that camera. Okay. And then take your left leg back behind you. Sit. And then start lifting up really, really tall. Squeeze into your buttocks. Work the shoulders down. And it's really important the band's going to pull your shoulder forward. So you've got to drive the shoulder blades down the back of your ribcage. So you're opening your chest a little bit. Remember that egg in the spoon. Bring your chin back. Squeeze your buttocks at the top. Lift up through your pelvic floor. And then lower down. And then push through your right heel and lift up and squeeze. And then again, lower down. Inhale, exhale. Lift up through your center. Lower down. And then lift back up. So Jana and... Kirsten, tell me if you can uh, do this in one breath. So take a big breath, inhale, exhale. Yes, just about, good. Okay, so let's try and do it at that pace. Inhale, exhale, lift up through your pelvic floor, squeeze your buttocks lower down and lift. Good, nice. Okay, so go do two more of those for me. So keep doing this at home as well. So lower down and lift. Lovely. Okay. And then one more. And then release. Now we're going to turn away from our bands now. So we're going to drop one of the bands and just use the, the blue one. I'm going to turn away. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how at home you can do this without a support. So um, Jana and Kirsten, you're just going to hold your uh, band underneath your arm. I'm going to put it around my back uh, just to show you how you can do this without a support. So you can literally hold it around the back of your back and just hold it into your right hand. So take your right leg back behind you. That's it. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. But this is tricky because what we're going to do is we're going to push the arm forward at the same time. And what happens is it tends to make you want to lunge forward. Remember, your body has to stay vertical as you're doing this. So come up nice and tall again. Squeeze into your buttocks at the top. Lift up through your center. Take a breath. Inhale, exhale, and drop down. And then lift back up. And then inhale. Squeeze your buttocks. Lift through your center. And then lower down. And then lift back up. So do you feel how the temptation is to pull forwards, but keep your body upright. Inhale, exhale, lower. And then back up. And again, lower. And back up. And again, lower. And back up. Keep going for me. Keep going at home. Lower down. Lovely. Really nice. And make sure you're keeping that vertical line in your body. So it's hard, isn't it, to stay vertical? Yeah, in your buttocks, feeling it in your buttocks. That's good. We want to feel it in the bottom. Do one more for me. And then change sides. So take it into the other hand. And you might want to just move your band along a little bit. So, okay. And then into the other hand. I'll do it with the other band. So if you've got one of these wide bands, you can use one of these as well. Remember, you can do all of these exercises without the bands as well. Um, so if you haven't got one initially, then that's fine. Okay. So left foot back behind. Come up nice and tall. Squeeze into your buttocks. Take a breath. And use a kind of opposite action with the other hand. So press forward as you lower down. Squeeze into your buttocks. And then lift back up. So it's a bit like a kind of a walking action. So inhale. Exhale. And then inhale. And exhale. Now, hopefully, if we have a side view on this, you should see that we are perfectly dropping vertically to the floor. <laughs> and then lift back up. So remember, you need to push through your right heel to lift back up. Yep. So lower down. And then lift back up. I'm going to come forwards because 
hopefully you can see my back now and and follow me from behind so lower down and then lift back up and then inhale exhale lower down and then lift back up let's go for one more inhale exhale lower down and then lift back up and rest it there so that's just a little taster of the strength moves we can do. We always do what we call compound moves, where we work everything together. So we're working the core, we're working the arms, we're working the legs, because that's how the body's supposed to function. All the way through that, you should have been using your pelvic floor. And we may have forgotten about it at some points, but hey, that's fine, that's life. But what I want you to do now at home is start thinking about your core, everything you do. And let's just do a little bit of practical function functional lowering lifting so we were doing it very much kind of in a in a um, workout um, situation but let's think if you were to pick something up off the floor it's a lunge it's a squat yeah so it's over there okay you've got to pick something up and you're going to lunge down to pick it up okay what are you going to do first you're going to engage your core so pull up through your pelvic floor step forwards and lower down okay and then lift back up there's something over there now so you're going to step forward lunge down engage your core Lower down, find your pelvic floor, and then lift back up. Okay. And when you're doing this, let's 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 go directly to the floor. But we're going to go right to the floor. So I'm going to do it first. So you're going to go down to the floor. You keep your back nice and long. So let's have a side view. You're not going to pick up from the floor like this. Okay. So you're going to drop down to the floor, keeping your back up nice and tall, and use your legs. And this is why you need strong legs. So if you find that a struggle, you know you've got to work on your leg strength. This is why we do lots of lunges. So step forward with one leg, just drop down. Can you drop all the way down? Is it tough? And then lift back up. You can do it, but maybe we need to get our legs really strong so we find that really easy. Do it one more time with the other leg, but engage your pelvic floor. So step forward, find your pelvic floor. Stop a fart, stop a wee. Now lower down. Pick a child, something, anything up off the floor, and then come back up, and then step back. So that's the kind of thing that we need to be training to be able to get our bodies strong to be able to do. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do some stretching. We're going to come down to the floor, and we're going to come down onto one knee. So if you put, um, we've got these blocks. You can use a cushion or a towel or anything you've got at home, and put it underneath your knee and come down. And then we talked about releasing tension in the calves because the calves get really, really tight. We also need to release tension in the front of this thigh here. So we're going to pull the skin up over our hip. And that's really important because that's helping you to lengthen out the front of your, of your left thigh. So you're lifting the skin up and you're going to engage your core. So you're going to stop a fart, stop a wee, pull up through your center and excuse me, pull your belly in. So squeeze your buttock as well and then you're going to come forwards and feel some length at the front of your thigh. Now, it goes without saying, with any of these movements, if they cause any kind of discomfort or pain, you stop and you reassess what you're doing. Because it might be that a position doesn't work for you. You might have so a lot of uh, instability that it causes pain in your symphysis pubis in here. Or likewise, it could be causing pain in your sacrum. So if ever that happens, you stop and you readjust what you're doing. Always communicate with us. Send us notes if you feel, uh, you know, send us a message, let us know. Uh, but we will be addressing all of these kind of pains and ailments that we can get during pregnancy throughout the classes because there's always a solution to them. So if you feel anything right now, you stop, pull back, release. Uh, don't go back into it until you can do it pain-free or you send us a note, tell us what the issues are and then we will address it. Okay, change, other side. So do you feel that stretch? Yeah, so just lift up over your hip and then come forward and get some length in the front of your thigh. And then just really try to stretch out the front of your thigh. Now again, these muscles that run over the hip, they're called the hip flexors, uh, a particular muscle called the psoas. It's another stress muscle like the calves are, like the muscles that go up into your neck. It's a stress tension muscle. So it tends to really hang in there. And in pregnancy, more so than at any other time, because of the lack of stability in your pelvis, it tends to really stress out. Yeah? So it gets really tight. So we have to learn to let, get, learn to let it go. So I want you to do one more big breath for me. Inhale. Exhale. And just allow your hip to sink forward. But pull the skin up over that thigh. And then lift your belly in. Because you don't want your back to really arch. So you're trying to lift up through your pelvic floor and into your belly. That's good. Okay, now, another stretch area that we want to work on 
are the hips. Now we're going to try a stretch now, which we should all be able to do at this stage in your pregnancy. Um, if you are struggling with it, then um, uh, then just as we go into it, stick with the version that actually works for you because there's a milder version as we go into it and don't go into the full stretch. So we're going to do, it's called a pigeon stretch in yoga. So you're going to bring your right knee up and underneath you and then turn your knee out to the side and then walk your other leg back. And it might be that you can't walk back very far and you have to stay up here or it might be that you can go into a full stretch and come down to the floor. Now when you're in this position, or in this position, I want you to think about lifting your tailbone up and pressing your chest lower to the floor. And you're kind of lengthening your chest towards the floor. So you're not uh, rounding your back. So if we can have a side view, I'm going to do it wrong for a moment. You're not rounding your back. You're trying to lengthen your spine. So that's why you're walking your left leg back. And you're trying to keep your hips fairly square as well. And then change sides. The other area that can, particularly in pregnancy, start to feel vulnerable is your knees. So again, if you don't like this stretch, I'm going to show you an alternative, actually, which we'll do right at the very end of the class. So just walk that right leg back. So if you're struggling with this right moment, just stop and just go onto your knees and relax. And then I'll show you an alternative when we stand up. Okay, but breathe. Inhale, exhale. Lift up through your center. Stretch through that thigh muscle and into, say, thigh muscles. Not, you're not stretching the thigh, you're stretching the hip muscles, deep in your hip. And then what we want to do is we want to do a stretch that's going to stretch your pelvic floor. And this is a lovely stretch for the back as well. So you're going to take your knees wide, out, stretch your hands out in front, and then just pull back. And just allow your body to relax towards the floor. And if you find that's too much, you can always put some cushions or blocks underneath your head. And if we can have a side view on this, please. And with your bottom up in the air, that's going to really help to release your pelvic floor. It should feel nice. Yeah? You feel okay? So we've now come to the end of this session. I did want to go through the pelvic floor very quickly, just one more time. So we'll just do that now. And I've got the, um, the guys to, to have piles of blocks. And I want you to pile them up now. And I'm not going to do it, but I want you guys to straddle your blocks. Now, what you can do at home is you can get a pile of books and sit on them. I'm too low here, but I want you guys to be a lot higher because basically it's a lot more comfortable. So if you do suffer with your knees, this position should be quite comfortable. It's a nice position to be in in pregnancy. It also brings your spine into a really nice relaxed position, whereas when you're as low as I am, um, it can cause a little bit of tension into, into the legs. So hopefully you both feel nice and, nice and comfortable. The other reason to sit you in this position is that it really helps to establish where your pelvic floor is. So we're just going to go through the pelvic floor in a little bit more detail, and then we'll finish off on that stretch again for the pelvic floor. So we talked about it being a diamond shape, and the fact that you can scoop up from the back of the pelvic floor, and you can draw up from the front. When you're sat on your blocks or your books or whatever you've got at home, pull your butt cheeks out from underneath you and feel your sit bones. Yep, so you can feel them. Okay. Now, those sit bones, the pelvic floor attaches on the inside of those sit bones. So I want you to do your stop a fart, stop a wee, but I also want you to think of drawing those sit bones in. So think of the diamond shape and imagine pulling the four corners of the diamond up and inside you. So you're really trying to pull those sit bones in as well. Yeah, okay. So take a breath, inhale, exhale. As you exhale, relax. And then stop a fart, stop a wee. Draw those two feelings together, but feel those sit bones and imagine pulling those up and in and up inside you as well. And keep lifting up and up and up and up and up and then let it drop back down. Do you feel that? Yeah? So it's a much stronger feel. Okay, so we're going to do that again. Take a breath, inhale, exhale, relax. And then stop a fart, stop a wee, pull up on the inside and pull up and up. And it's like you're going up in a lift, going up five floors and all the way to the top and then let it drop back down. So this is a really good way to work the pelvic floor. It's not working anything else, but because your pelvic floor is gonna get a lot of stress, 
you need to work it more than other muscles. So you need to be doing this every day. You don't have to be sat on blocks or on books. You could be sat on the bus, on the tube, on the train, in your car and doing these exercises. But this is a good position to really feel it strongly. So we'll do it again. Take a breath. Inhale. Exhale. And then stop a fart, stop a wee. Draw those two feelings together. Pull the sit bones up and in and keep pulling up and up and up and up and up. So as well as doing this workout that we've done today at least two more times this week, I want you to do that pelvic floor exercise every single day. So you're pulling up through the pelvic floor, drawing up through your center. Every single day, you should be doing as many of those contractions as you can. But very importantly, always relax the pelvic floor as well. So we're going to finish off in our stretch again. Um, and we'll say bye-bye for now. And we'll see you next week. So you're just going to pull back with your bottom up.